Um, well, first of all, I should say I'm a big fan of NASA. Um, in fact, at one point, my password was I love NASA. Um, <laughs> literally, that was my password. Um, um, and, um, you know, I think the NASA, NASA does a lot of good things for which, pe for which it doesn't get enough credit um, and that the public, I guess, doesn't know that much about. Um, I like a lot, you know, most members of the public they're not really into hard science, you know, it's like not, it's not the, the thing they're tuning in for most of the time. Um, I love hard science, you know, uh, but uh, um, it's not that popular. So, uh, but there's great things in terms of the, the telescopes like the Hubble and the James Webb and the, you know, the rovers on Mars um, and uh, the pro, you know, probes to the outer solar system. Um, those are all like really great things, um, but to get the public excited, you got to get people in the picture. Um, it just it's just a hundred times different if there are people in the picture. Um, and uh, you know, if, if there's some criticism of NASA, it's like I, it's like important to remember people in the picture. You know, if you want to get the public support. Um, and um, but but like if if you talk to a scientist about. Well, where's the science in that? Like, you're not getting it. It's like, that's not why people are giving you money. <laughs> it's not, that's, I mean, it's a little bit of the reason, but uh, the, 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 the serious scientists are like, people just make things more expensive. Uh, like, why do we have people? Like, okay, well, why do we have people at all? <laughs> or anywhere? Um, sometimes the scientists are the ones who just don't, don't understand. Um, even though they're like smart people, but like, you know. Um, so, you got to have something that's going to fire up the, you know, fire, fire people up and get them really excited. And like, I think if we were, had a serious goal of having a base on the moon and sending people to Mars, um, and said, okay, this is, we're going to be outcome oriented. How are we going to do this? Okay, we've got to change the way contracting is done. Uh, you can't do these like cost plus contracts, cost plus sole source contracts because then the incentive structure is all messed up. So uh, as soon as you don't have any competition, well, okay, there's no essential st urgency goes away. And as soon as you make something a cost plus contract, you're incenting the contractor to maximize the costs of the program because they get a percentage. So they never want that gravy train to end and they want to make it, a, it ends a, a, they become cost maximizers. Um, and then you have good people engaged in cost maximization because you just gave them incentive to do that. <laughs> and told them they'll get punished if they don't. Essentially, that's what happens. So it's critically important that we change the contracting structure to be a um, competitive commercial bid, make sure that there are, there are always two, at least two entities um, that, that are competing to serve NASA, um, and that the contracts are milestone-based with, with uh, concrete milestones. PowerPoint presentations do not count. Um, like Everything works in PowerPoint. Okay. Except I have a tele. Look, here's my PowerPoint presentation. Um, so, uh, milestone-based competitive uh, commercial contracts with with competitors, and then and then you've got to be prepared to fire one of those competitors if they're not if they're not cutting it, and and recompete the rest of the remainder of that contract. And by the way, NASA's actually already done this, and they did it with the commo with the uh, commercial cargo. Uh, transportation to the space station, um, and that was a case where NASA, you know, the NASA actually, I'm, I'm not sure if they thought it would work or not work, but they didn't have the budget to do anything else. So they're like, okay, we're going to try this competitive commercial milestone-based contracting, and it worked great. Um, and they awarded it to, uh, to two companies, to, to SpaceX and a company called Kistler, and SpaceX managed to Meet, meet the milestones. Kistler did not, so then they, NASA recompeted the remainder of the contract to uh, Orbital Sciences, but then Orb Orbital Sciences got across the finish line, so now NASA's got two suppliers for uh, taking cargo to the space station, um, and it's a great situation. Same thing for co commercial crew to the space station. NASA competed that. Um, uh, in, 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 the, in the commercial crew case, it's SpaceX and Boeing, um, and I think that's also a good situation. So now, um, like I can tell you, like the SpaceX team is like, we're gonna 
do this before Boeing. That's for sure. <laughs> and then, like, I met up the Boeing team. They're like, we're going to do this before SpaceX. Um, that's good. That's a, it's a good forcing function to get things done. That, that, I can't tell you how important that contracting structure is. That is night and day. Um, there's way too much uh, in, in government which is uh, where it's a sole source uh, cost plus contract. Um, that, that just, again, economics 101, whatever you incent, well, that will happen. And people shouldn't be surprised. It's like, oh, you just, you know, said, okay, if, if that company manages to find some excuse to double the cost of the contract, they're going to get double the profit because they're getting a percentage. So they're going to do, they're going to do exactly that. Um, and, and also, they're not going to say no to requirements. So the government will come up with some set of requirements. 90% of them could make a lot of sense, and 10% of them are cockamamie that double the, the, the price of the, of the, of the, the project. But those 10% of cockamamie <laughs> requirements in a cost plus contract, the contractor will always say yes. There could be a future for you in, in government contracting at the state level. Yeah. <laughs> what right away does this granting of the contract from NASA really mean to the future of SpaceX? Well, I think it's a, it's a vital next step uh, in SpaceX's progress. Uh, it's the, it, it, um, it, you know, it, it's, it's about taking astronauts to uh, eliminating the dependency on Russia for transporting uh, U.S. astronauts. Uh, but for, for SpaceX, it's, it's sort of a, it's the next step in, um, in the technology we're developing. And it means we've got uh, a key anchor tenant in NASA for, uh, uh, as a customer for uh, for human transport, uh, it's uh, 2001, with just just talking to a friend of mine, and he asked me he asked me what I was going to do after PayPal, and I thought, well, you know, I was wondering like um, I'd like to get involved in space, but I, I just didn't think there's anything I could do as an individual, um, and uh, but I was curious as to when we when we NASA would be sending a, a, a team to Mars because that was always going to be the thing to do after the moon. Um, I figured that, that there'd be some plan, and I'd just go to the website and, and I could read the, you know, the schedule. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> then Mars occurs. So, oh yeah, it's like okay, 2017, good. Okay, um, but, it, but actually there wasn't anything on on the website, and um, <laughs> or at least I thought like, am I can I not find it? Like, what's going on in here? Um, and is it secret? I don't know. Uh, so, but it turned out that um, that NASA had done a study on what it would cost to send to, to do a um, manned Mars mission, and uh, this was under Bush the first, and uh, he, in, his, in his first, he asked for a 90-day study shortly after uh, uh, taking office, and NASA came back with a $500 billion price tag, and he said, "Okay, maybe not." Billions uh, of B. That's yeah. when $500 mm -hmm. billion dollars was serious money um, <laughs> uh, yeah, for the government. Um, so, so, so then that got totally shelved, and it was like you were not allowed to talk about any kind of crewed mission to Mars at NASA. <laughs> um, Anyway, so I, I, but I thought, well, uh, if I can do something that would um, galvanize public interest, that and, and then that public interest would translate to uh, additional appropriations for NASA and increase the, their budget, then then maybe they could do it.